Welcome to our Sunday service on May 17th. It is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We join together in confessing our sins. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. We continue in our service with our lesson for the day. And before that, we have the verse of the day. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him, alleluia. Our scripture reading for today is from the great love chapters of John's epistles, 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 18, where indeed John talks about our life as Christians, loving one another. This is the message you have heard from the beginning, love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own works were evil, while those of his brother were righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, if the world hates you, we know that we have crossed over from death to life because we love our brothers. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. This is how we have come to know love. Namely, Jesus laid down his life for us. And we also should lay down our lives for our brothers. Whoever has worldly wealth and sees his brother in need but closes his heart against him, how can God's love remain in him? Dear children, let us love not only with word or with our tongue, but also in action and truth. This is our lesson. We bow our heads in prayer. Father of light, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The word of God for our sermon on this, the sixth Sunday of the Easter season, is from John chapter 14, and we begin reading at verse 15. If you love me, hold on to my commands. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. You know him because he stays with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The one who has my commands and holds on to them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and show myself to him. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord, sanctify us with your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, as we hear Jesus speaking to us today, it's in the setting of Jesus speaking his last remarks to his disciples before he goes to the cross in Jerusalem. It's the, the last part of his address to his disciples. And what is the topic that Jesus then is mentioning here that he wants them to hang hold of in their minds? It's this, that he's leaving them, but he's not leaving them as orphans. No, indeed, he's going to be sending the spirit, who he says is the spirit of truth, the counselor, the one to guide them, and then all through this process, he will remain consistent in his love for everyone. Physical things are going to change, but the Lord God is always going to be there to give us life and to help us live in love. As Jesus says here, the one who loves him is the one who's going to hold on or obey his commandments. Over and over in this section, Jesus wants his disciples to find some measure of comfort and peace and to make sense of the turmoil that was about to befall them. It wouldn't look like there is love around. And with Jesus then being taken away from them and suffering and dying, it, it certainly seemed like this is it. Everything's gone. But Jesus wants to continually mention there's a continuity. Something keeps on going here. And to help them understand that, to, to might say, keep looking forward, push on through the difficulties that are coming, he says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. See, Jesus was, in a way, that counselor for them in a physical way, but now there would be another one coming, and he says it's the Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And he even references that the day is coming soon, and you'll understand all this. But that counselor, when he comes, yes, he would be the one who would then help them realize the truth. And as that truth is expressed to you and me, it's something we can hang on to. The Holy Spirit is the one who, Jesus says, is going to stay with you and be in you. He was setting them up for that transition from thinking of the Lord God in person, but to think of a much greater way. He's, he's here, not seen, but always with us. And that spirit, when you place your hope and trust in the Lord, that spirit is inside of us. You see, the alternative is then to be like the world, Jesus says. And, and they can't receive the spirit because they don't see him. They don't see him physically. They don't see him in the eyes of faith. But Jesus is encouraging us as we walk in the, the latter days of this world, see me, know me through the words of truth and know that I love you. Here's where Jesus then promised that. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. Now that for Jesus was very true that in a measure of a couple days after he has been put to death, they would see him again. But he says, when that time comes, that's it for the world. They're not going to be able to see him physically. They're going to have to depend, as, as we do, 
Or as Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Because we can see him in the eyes of faith. And when we do so, we understand. When Jesus said to his disciples, because I live, you will live, we understand that really is meant for us too. We don't see Jesus physically, but we know spiritually that he has indeed come back to life. And that because he lives, we put our trust in him too. And we know that when our time is done, we will see that Lord in heaven. We just don't die and go into oblivion, or worse yet, die and, and then be sent to hell. But by faith in Christ Jesus, we can look at death and say, it is that doorway through which we go to be with that Lord in heaven. Now, how that is proven to us is because of that day, says Jesus. The day that he's talking about is Pentecost. And we're going to celebrate that in a couple of weeks. But Pentecost always reminds us that, you know what? God has kept his word. You might say that Pentecost brings full circle what was taken away from mankind. Because on Pentecost, we have God's truth being evident to us. And now the stumbling blocks that are there that cause people error, not so the Holy Spirit comes, you might say, to undo what the Tower of Babel did, confusing of people with languages. The Holy Spirit will speak in everyone's language, and he'll tell us about the gift of God's love. It's making God's love complete. And really, Jesus is mentioning this so that the disciples may realize the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all about love, and that Jesus Christ is going to be the, the one who by his life explains the depth and the riches of God's love. He says, I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I in you. And this Holy Spirit, that's his work, to continually help us understand that we are united in love. You know, Jesus is encouraging all people to do something, to see something about their life. When, when you talk about someone's breathing, you then say they have life. Or if you see a fire and you see it burning, then you say, there is heat. And now Jesus says, here's something else you can say. That when you say, you love me, then you hold on to, you obey my commandments. And, and we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments, but we're talking about everything in Scripture that has been revealed to us so that we can build our lives in that love, that truth about our Lord God. And when we do so, then we should be able to say, now we want to love one another as the Lord has loved us. And that is therefore the purpose of our church. That's the way we continue being Christians, to live in the love of our Lord and to demonstrate that to the people in the world by obeying, doing exactly what our Lord says. That can be difficult at times. We'd like to do it in, in joint worship, but we're still doing it through our video service, but nonetheless it is the same love that we want to think about and express. And it's with that sort of love that we send the young children forward in the world, and that we have parents raise their children, that grandparents continually live as examples for their children and for their grandchildren, and that as Christians we live in that love so that we might then share it with the world. No, Jesus is not leaving us alone. He's here. He's in our hearts. And we pray he be part of everything we do. To that end, we ask for God's blessings and commend ourselves to his love. As you live in a difficult time or in a joyous time, do it all to the glory and praise of our Lord. Do it all in love for him. This is our message today. We will join together now in expressing our loving faith in the Lord, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, accept our offering of thanks and praise. How great was your devotion to the task of our redemption. How totally unselfish was the sacrifice you made in our behalf. Our sins brought you pain and suffering and death. You brought us life and salvation. The debt we owed, a holy and just God, you paid in full with your sacrifice on the cross. You exchanged your righteousness for our sins, so that we can stand before our God unashamed and fully acceptable. In your glorious resurrection, we now find the certain hope of our own resurrection. And now, O Christ, your intercession to God in our behalf gives us courage and boldness to pray and confidence that our prayers are answered. For every occasion, when we have failed to trust you, to love you, to keep you in our thoughts, to serve you, to continue in your word, to pray to you, to praise you, or to witness about you to others, cover us with your righteousness. How it comforts us to know that you are our ever-living King, who reigns supreme, hearing and answering our prayers, and causing all things to work for our good. Yes, even those things that frightened and afflict us. All praise to your name on earth and in heaven, precious Savior Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. This will conclude our service here this morning. Stay tuned. On Thursday, we will have our Ascension service. There will be no Wednesday devotion. And in the future, who knows? Now with the change of orders in our state, we're going to be planning so that we can come and safely worship in our congregation. We will let you know on what Sunday or Saturday and Sunday that will occur. May you have a good rest of the week.